Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to WPF and SQLite. Let me tell you how we're going to do this. I was going to have uh, just three videos, and that was going to be end up to be about an hour and 30 minutes. It was a little bit uh, too cramped, too rushed. So instead, I have six videos, somewhere around 15 minutes, 20 minutes a piece for around an hour and 30 minutes also, but split up a little bit better. In this first video, we are going to set up our view model. It's pretty much identical to the previous view models I've used in my other tutorials. In fact, I'm using a project from one of the other tutorials. I'm just going to update it to this project, to, to what we're about to do. We are, in the next video, we're going to validate the database. Then we're going to create our custom in its entities. We're going to actually create them this time and then update them as we're going along, add new properties to them, connect those to the database. Then we have to validate our data before we store it, update it, delete it, etc. So we are about to jump into it. Let's get going. I'm going to give you a screenshot, pause the screen, and add this text, add this uh, to your project. The notifier class goes at the base of your project at the base of the WPF project. Now, since this is an already existing project that I have, I'm going to add another window to it. But let's go ahead and add the class to the base. Now, we are here is our second class. The only, two, only property we're worried about is um, the name property. So don't worry about the other two properties. Those are for other tutorials. And we, we're not going to work with the I parent item in this tutorial. But I do, we do need to add uh, two or three properties dirty, delete, and new. So three properties to this. Since we're working with a database, we're not going to uh, update our database every time we change our uh, change a field. That would be insane. Now, although we're working with a custom database here, we are going to stick close to Microsoft's uh, entity framework. So we are going to have three properties here on our base item. I almost done this tutorial with the entity framework, but I thought that was a little bit too much and it would have added another hour to the course, I think, to the tutorial. So we just need some properties here to say it's a new item. It's a, can't use it until we commit. So if it's still marked as new, we can't use it yet. Or if we deleted it, or if we're going to delete it on the next commit, then we need to um, uh, not use it. We need to validate that nothing is using it. And then, of course, dirty simply means to update it. Here's our base view. You've seen that before. Um, just pause, add that to a model folder. I have a folder over here called model. Just add it in there. Go back to it if I'm going too fast for you and just pause. The base view um, is the base of all of our model views. Okay, so I'm going to the new get package and we need to get our package here. We need to add two different uh, libraries in the Microsoft data.sqlite and the Microsoft.data.sqlite.core. And my internet connection is acting. There we go. So Microsoft.data.sqlite. And they should both should come up, up at the top. And there they are. So just select the project. And install it. And it, mine are already downloaded, so they're going to install probably faster if you haven't downloaded them yet. Install it to both of them. And come on. There they go. Took a couple seconds to show up. Okay. So back over here. need to add some new classes I'm trying to go fast so 
I need to add a new window first of all because uh, the windows the window that's in this project is already in use. So I'm adding a new window called vehicle windows. We're doing this on vehicles. I'm sorry, sure I already mentioned that. So it's a pseudo project on vehicles. So I gotta change my app uh, my app uh, file to point to the new window. Start if you started with a new project, don't worry about it. Now I've changed, I've added a new class to my model folder called vehicle view. And it will be based on that very simple base view. Since that base view is using a generic in the constructor, it's requiring a generic, we're going to pass in our window. So that would probably be main window for you if you started a new project. For me, it's vehicle window. I'm going to add a new file to my model folder. Uh, vehicle brand vehicle category and vehicle and those are the three classes we will use now this we will have relationships but we're not going to put strengths in I realized this tutorial was going going to be a little bit longer than what I wanted so in the ID could be moved down to the base item but since this is being used by another tutorial, I'm just going to add the ID to each of these files. I'm just going to copy all that over. And also, since everything is already public, all the classes are public in this project, we need to move these, all our new classes, over or turn them into public. All right, that's pretty much our start. But let's go. Let's use this time and let's get everything set up. Or as far as we can go. Now over our vehicle, our vehicle of course is going to have some other properties. Um, it's going to have a category, a vehicle category. It's going to have a vehicle brand. It will have the number of wheels on the vehicle and the number of doors. You know, and it will also have a category ID for uh, ease of use with the database, to make it easier to update. So shortly we'll convert this um, selected category over to extract the ID from the selected category and put that into a selected uh, our category ID property. We'll do that in a little bit. And let me put pragma up here for that nullable warning. So pragma warning disabled, 86.25, 86.25 and 86.18 are the two that will pop up the most. And I just copied and pasted the vehicle category down there. I'm going to change, with everything selected, I'm going to change it to vehicle brand to our other class. Instead of typing in again. Now private int category ID. We'll set this up in just a little bit. Let's go ahead and get the property in here. I'm trying to get the boring stuff out of the way that I've already done. If you want to see the view model tutorial, that is, just go to my uh, YouTube page and go to the WPF tutorials, and you will see there will be a view model tutorial there. Brief, what, what, what is Brief Microsoft? It's just throwing stuff out there. That's the AI. It just randomly throws stuff at you. I expect fireworks to fall for any minute in the background. Okay. Now wheels and doors. Use that name of the 
property. So that when you change, if you change the property's name with the rename by right clicking and selecting rename, it will select, it will change it in the name of. So you don't have to remember to go around and change it manually. But if you put in double quotes, you have to go around and change it everywhere manually. All right, there's our wheels and doors. There's our main properties. Jump over the vehicle category is good. And vehicle brand is good. Let's go ahead and close those because we're not going to touch them again. All right. Now, uh, I have error messages also. And error messages are just, a, are just a way to inform the user that you can't commit this ac action right now. So, this is a vehicle error message, and it will basically tell the user that it's kind of lame but that the brand has not been committed to the database yet or the category has not been committed to the database yet and you need to commit it before you use it. it with a loosely bound or with a loosely related database like we're going to about to create we don't really have to worry about it but Okay, now we need observable collections and selected items for our vehicles, our categories, and our brands. So, let's rapid fire vehicles. Yeah, yeah you're really intelligent, AI. Let's think, see, I think the AI is getting intelligent. I think it gets mad at me for disagreeing with what his suggestion is, so it kicks me out of the property. Where I'm just typing something somewhere random where it put me. Kind of like a sci-fi movie. movie. <laughs> Excuse my voice, I'm a little bit hoarse. But it is me. Another crack. No, which one was it? Was it 8625? No. It's 8618. I know it may be null. In fact, I am going to set it to null occasionally. And I'm not going to turn it into a nullable. Ooh, it got one. Yes, the AI did guess what I was going to type next. One out of 20. It's not doing that well. I'm just going to copy and paste and do a find and replace. Make sure that it says selection. 2021 is just, or excuse me, 2022, Visual Studio 2022 is just annoying. It loves to have documents selected, although you have text selected. All right. There we go. We have our two properties three quarters of the way there. Alrighty, view code. Let's get our view model property in here. You know, it's nice. We're still in WPF, so we can still just set our Windows data context to this. I kind of like the Windows app SDK, though, in the way it does it. It's doing it different than WPF and UWP, but because of XBind, it works pretty well. If you got something out of this, 
like and subscribe. Do subscribe so you see the rest of the tutorial. All glory be to God, and I will see you in the next video.